This is here today is about Roland Vicky presenting oh. Vivid Audio. Well, thank you. Very kind, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that introduction, Abel, and of course, thanks, Sui, for um, bringing us all together here today. It's a really great opportunity. So I'm here, as Abel has said, to talk to you about this new development, the Gear Copper, but we felt it was appropriate for me to give you a little bit of the background, uh, the engineering background, certainly, to Vivid Audio and what makes uh, Vivid Audio I'll just let these, you know, welcome. <laughs> so uh, I used to work for a little known speaker company, Bowers and Wilkins. Uh, my last project and product indeed with them was a funny snail shaped creation. But when I'd finished that, I wanted to get into high power studio monitoring. And at the time it didn't suit Bowers and Wilkins. So I, I left the company to start working on my own. And in just under three years, I worked exclusively on perfecting some drivers which would feature a high output, uh, high efficiency and high power handling. And those drivers, which I developed at that time, have actually come through pretty much unchanged to the very latest Vivid Audio products. So if there were some central tenets, central philosophies to vivid audio engineering, it is to create loudspeakers which are as free as possible from resonance and reflection. The most obvious feature of vivid audio speakers is they all share this very curvy, smooth external shape. A lot of people have figured that was just a design exercise, that it was just a very 90s sort of style where everything is nice and curved because, of course, it's very easy to do that with computer modeling. But that's not the case. It's actually there for acoustic reasons. The freedom from hard edges gives a smooth and seamless environment in which the sound can leave the loudspeaker drivers without perturbation. What happens on the front? is obvious, what happens on the back is less obvious, but equally important. So the sound that comes from the front and the back of the loudspeakers is equal but opposite. And the purpose of a cabinet is to keep the sound on the back of the loudspeaker from mixing with that of the front. Because they're opposite, if you let the sound from the back mix with the front, you get nothing. So you have to enclose it. But the problem is, if that enclosure suffers from resonance, and if it's an ordinary box, it will, then those resonances will colour the sound you hear from the front. So the inventive step that we took back at BMW with the Nautilus, and which you'll find in all the drivers, not just the tweeter, on Vivid Audio speakers, is the use of an exponentially tapered absorber tube on the back of the drivers. And I'll demonstrate the effect of this tube by first of all talking into this Perspex tube, and you'll hear, I hope, the resonances as the sound bounces between the two ends, most especially from this end. And I hope that you'll hear, when I put the absorber on, all those resonances disappear. So I think that graphically demonstrates the benefit of the tapered, exponentially tapered absorber. I'll come back to that in just a second. So we've looked at the front shape. I've talked about the absorber on the back. And the last element, surely the most important element of the loudspeaker, is the diaphragm itself. And whilst the spherical cap of the old Nautilus with the carbon fiber ring worked pretty well, it struck me that it was unlikely to be the best shape. So again, a little bit of computer-aided uh, modeling and design showed that actually the best shape for a dome isn't a sphere. <laughs> it is uh, a catenary. And a catenary is the shape that you get when you hold a chain at both ends. 
like that. It's a very fundamental and simple shape that you'll find in all sorts of bridges and arches and domes in architecture, but it was the first time that it was applied to a loudspeaker with vivid audio. We also believe that it's very important that the vibration of the loudspeaker magnet should be decoupled from the cabinet because the cabinet acts like a sounding board. And whilst the vibration of the magnet is tiny, when you attach it to a sounding board, it becomes very audible. And what I will do to demonstrate is, here I've got a little music box. If you're lucky, you can just about hear that. But if I now put it on a, a thin, I hope this works. So you see how coupling this source of tiny vibrations to a big sounding board excites all the resonances in that board. And the same thing happens in the cabinet. If you, if you screw the driver straight to the cabinet, you will excite the structural resonances in the cabinet. But there's a very, very simple solution for the mid and high frequency domes, and that's to put an O-ring between the magnet and the cabinet. So if I now place that O-ring on that surface and put the little music box on top of it. Oh, no, sorry, I was doing that on here, wasn't it? So we're back to almost inaudible, and then for comparison. So you see, a very simple step has a huge effect on that particular source of coloration. When it comes to the base units, it's a slightly different problem, because if you have rubber soft enough to decouple the drivers, because you've got heavy magnet, if you've got the O-ring here and a heavy magnet, it constantly wants to fall, so what we do in the base drivers is to have a pair of base drivers, and not only does it support the magnet by, with a, tens, uh, a tension rod, but because the cones themselves are in opposition, it means that the vibration is naturally cancelled. Of course, we find that in all sorts of other applications, most famously in uh, Porsche and Ferrari engines where they put the pistons in opposition, and it really works, and it works just as well here. So, in... In 2006, we decided we needed a new flagship loudspeaker, and so the GEAR project was born. Uh, now, until then, the old um, uh, Oval series uh, from Vivid uh, had this interesting shape, but acoustically, it was just a cabinet with ports. And the inventive step there was to combine the benefits of the exponential absorber tube with the base reflex uh, loading system without affecting each one. So what we found was that there is, in fact, a magical combination of the tapered tube and a base reflex. And this little demonstration hopefully will show you that in operation. Let me just put that there where it won't fall out. So this is a model of a base reflex cabinet. That's the volume of the cabinet, the air. And this hole here represents the port. So when I start with one end blocked like this and I'll blow on it, you'll hear a hum. If I blow harder, you'll hear some high notes. And if I blow really hard, you'll hear those high notes being excited. Those are uh, other resonances. These, these are the resonances of the cabinet that you don't want. In a bass speaker, those high notes will blur the base and reduce the articulation. The solution is this exponential tube, and you'll see, you'll hear the hum. If I blow harder, you don't hear single notes, you'll just hear a rushing noise. You hear those high notes have gone away completely. So, this exponential tube is, again, found on all Vivid Audio products because it really works, even on the bass reflex. So that brings us to gear in its original conception. Now, in all of this time, I've really been talking about the acoustics, the smooth front, the tubes on the back, the dome, all of that stuff. It's, that's all acoustic. And you'd think that the <coughs> magnet 
the importance of the magnets had sort of faded into the background, but it never went away. The whole point of that original work that I did before starting Vivid Audio in developing magnets gave rise to a whole bunch of radial magnet technology, which is in itself quite unique. You don't find many other manufacturers, in fact one that I can think of, using radial magnets because it's actually quite difficult to make. But it has real benefits. It reduces distortion for one thing, but it also gives us a much more dynamic sound. Particularly in the bass, it allows, uh, it allows us to make a very long throw, very linear driver, which is great stuff. And it's been you know, the, the foundation, really, of so much of the Vivid Audio sound for all, uh, I suppose you could say, 20 years to this point. But as we were planning our Moya, we figured there are ways of improving it still further. We know that. It's, it's almost textbook stuff. The way in which the magnetic field from the voice coil in the driver interacts with the steel of the magnetic circuit around it is quite well known. The problem is that steel is fundamentally a nonlinear magnetic material. And in a magnet, <laughs> in, a, in a speaker magnet, you have the permanent magnet, in our case, rare earth magnet, and the magnetic field is connect, connect, conducted to the magnetic gap where the voice coil is by steel. And the magnetic field around the voice coil from the music signal will induce a change in the magnetic field in the steel and because of the non-linearity of the steel, that will impart a distortion onto the sound. So the solution is to put a copper cap over the pole, because putting a conductive cap over the pole has the effect of shielding the steel parts from the magnetic field of the voice coil. I've got this little demo here. Uh, okay. So this is a, a rare earth ring magnet. It's pretty strong, I can assure you. Um, if here I've got just a plain cardboard tube, and if I do that, of course, it falls from one end to the other. There's no damping, it just falls under the action of gravity. But if I put this copper tube over the top, you'll see how it suffers this really strong damping effect. And what's happening is that as you move the copper, uh, as you move the magnet, it's inducing currents in the copper which resist the change. And the same thing happens. Oops. So this is the pole from a, a D50. We've put copper over the pole. It's a thin layer, it's only point to 0.3 millimetres thick, but it's wrapped around the pole. And what this copper does is to resist the effects of the voice coil's magnetic field. So it stabilises the magnetic field and it prevents the voice coil seeing the nonlinear steel. And the effect of that is actually quite dramatic. It reduces the distortion by up to 20 decibels, which actually is much more than I'd expected. I'd been, as I say, quietly saying, well, our drivers are already very, very good. But a reduction of 20 decibels is actually quite incredible. So we introduced these copper magnet systems to our flagship M1 Moya. But we think it's so good, it was just wrong to keep it for just this one loudspeaker. So we've now decided to introduce copper upper and lower mid-range drivers to the whole of our gear range. So I don't know how Swee's going to organise this, but bit by bit I'd like you to all file through to the other room and hear the Vivid Audio Copper Gear G2, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the results. We think that it's uh, a definite step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.